This video is brought to you by Global Ordnance. Go check them out at www.globalordnance.com. Hello, my friends, and welcome to a new episode here at Ordnance Lab. I'm Jake, the mad scientist, and yes, I did. I shaved my head. I'm not trying to impersonate Lex Luthor, uh, Hispanic style, or did, I did not join a Hispanic gang. I just find it more convenient. But moving on, yeah, you might have noticed this giant roll of rope here and wondering what's going on here. Well, it's debt cord, the magical rope of destruction. And we use it all the time here in Ordnance Lab for various different reasons, but, you know, and there's a lot of misconceptions. I've heard a lot of people say what, you know, make comments about what deck cord can do, which is just not right. So today we're going to make a, you know, rather lengthy video explaining what all deck cord can do, can't do, and, you know, what, what does it consist of. So today we have a series of different demonstrations to show you what deck cord is, and uh, let's get to it. So what is deck cord? Well, it's basically rope with an explosive core. Nothing much to it. This crude diagram will give you a better idea of what deck cord consists of. The core of deck cord is a secondary explosive, normally PETN, but other explosives are used such as RDX or HMX. The explosive core is wrapped with a synthetic fiber layer such as nylon or polyurethane. This varies by manufacturer, but is normally synthetic material. The outer layer normally consists of woven synthetic fibers, but can also be simply plastic tubing. Once again, depends on the manufacturer. These two layers provide both waterproofing and also gives it great tensile strength, strong enough to survive an attack from a world domination deranged cat or for use as a leash to walk a weapons lab. Deck cord comes in various sizes depending on grain amount. In the US, it's grains per foot, grain being a very goofy measurement where there are 7,000 grains in one pound. For the rest of the world, deck cord is measured in grams per meter. For example, this strand here is approximately one foot long and is 25 grains. So there are 25 grains of PETN contained in the length of the deck cord. That is approximately 1.6 grams of PETN, roughly two blasting caps. Besides being very tensile, deck cord is very safe to use. Setting this small strand on fire simply causes the PETN core to rapidly burn away. Now this doesn't mean that it's fire safe and you can toss a roll into a bonfire. Deck cord simply doesn't detonate immediately when exposed to flame. With enough fire though, it will detonate, so don't do it. It's also rather impact safe. We took another strand and attempted to set it off with a hammer, but with no success. Our first demonstration of its explosive potential involves this length here attached to a plywood witness plate. You will see that the small amount of explosive will punch right through the wood without issues. Let's see what it can do. Well, that was pretty cool. As you can see, uh, that little strand of deck cord did a number on this segment of plywood. Uh, I mean, wood is a phenomenal absorber of energy. I mean, if you're shot at it with, you know, with, with a firearm, the wood does a good job of slowing down projectiles because it's many layers of fiber, which does uh, disperses the energy, not, uh, not too uh, dissimilar from say body armor, which is many layers of Kevlar or other synthetic fibers. And as it strikes, the fibers don't get out of the way. So the, they absorb the energy over a larger area. And that's what sort of what wood does though. This is plywood, so it has different layers that are glued, but it punctured right through perfectly. And, well, not perfectly, but as you see, it just makes a neat little, you know, cut in it. Over here is where the detonator was, and here's the rest where the just strand was. And you can see it's pretty powerful, right? But let's move on to something more realistic. Let's say if we wanted to try and cut down mm, a tree limb. So what we'll do is we'll take a couple wraps of deck cord, head over to a tree branch, and then see if we can cut the branch off. Um, depending on which branch we choose, but we'll, we'll head over there, take a look, and then uh, show the setup, and then set it off and see if the uh, branch comes right off. Our target is this Wiesatch tree that Sean deemed to be removed. Sean wrapped two portions of the tree with two separate deck cord charges. Each charge was then linked with a deck cord bridge so they can detonate in sequence. Okay, so we have two different charges as you can see here. One at the thicker point of the trunk and one here where it branches off a little bit and is a little bit thinner. The branch here is about a little bit over two inches and then the main trunk right here is a little bit over three inches. So Sean wrapped around here a ton of deck cord, about 15 feet, or about five meters. And then this one is about seven feet or a little bit over two meters. And it's connected by this line of deck cord that is woven into both. This is going to act like a, a basically is like a big compression around the tree and it's going to compress the wood in which wood is really good at dealing with is compression. And the same thing up here. Also, ideally you want to put a large amount of explosives on one side to shear the, the tree over because then you can use the weight of the tree. But we're going to demonstrate how this deck cord works against say fresh wood because this tree is still alive. Uh, so uh, we'll put an electric blasting cap, get to a safe distance and see how this thing performs. Thank you. 
So you can see the deck cord performed rather well in cutting the wood. Now, wood is really tough to cut with explosives. You need a good amount of explosives or a focused amount of explosives, such as a shape charge, or in this case, wrapping the deck cord very concentrically in a small area. So a lot of the energy is concentrated in a small point versus say up the tree where you're wrapping it constantly. You're, de you're splitting the force across the wood, which will prevent the wood from getting cut. And both of them cut like a laser beam, right? Nice and flat, like right here. And same thing right here. The wood took a lot of the energy, well, it took all the energy, obviously, and split it open. Now, I, I don't know how old this tree is. It's still a little bit wet, so yet it still managed to go through. And down here with the uh, five meters of deck cord, or 15 feet, it cut the thicker trunk, no problem. And then up here with the two-ish meters, the, the, the seven feet, it also cut it pretty well. Of course, we wrapped it on top of each other. If we spread it all out, it wouldn't have worked. But this is a good, uh, a good <clears throat> demonstration of how powerful deck cord is. Let's move on to something more difficult, say metal. We found the steel pipe, which is an ideal target to demonstrate deck cord against metal. The total thickness of the pipe was about four millimeters, making it a decently sturdy target for this demonstration. We then wrapped two meters of deck cord around the middle of the pipe in a tight pattern to ensure the explosive force was focused to a small area. So you can see the pipe is still intact despite almost six feet or two meters, give or take, of deck cord wrapped around it and uh, wrapped in a very tight pattern. So we did the same pattern of <clears throat> where we put all the deck cord in a small area, like with the tree that we did a little earlier, and it cut it perfectly like a laser, whereas with this pipe, it simply crushed it. And that's because metal is not wood. Go figure. And it's, it is hollow, which does change the behavior of how this pipe would have behaved. Say if it was solid, we'd have had a different outcome. It's still been crushed in, it wouldn't have been as crushed. We might have had a separate amount of warpage. It all depends. But this tubing obviously can go inward. Whereas the wood, the explosive has to, get the wood absorb all the energy and then it breaks away in layers because it is layers of cellulose. But the, you can see that the deck cord has its limitations. And if I wanted to cut this pipe, I would have used something different, say a larger amount of high explosive or a shape charge or a high, heavier grain deck cord if uh, I decided to opt for deck cord because that was my only option. But in this case, it was not the best choice. But there's more of a demonstration to show that deck cord is not always the best item for cutting materials, such as uh, something a little bit more heavy duty, such as metal. There's, a, there's obviously better options. But deck cord does have other great uh, uses. And let's go take a look at another use for deck cord. All right, so we're down here at our demolition range, freshly burned from a previous video you might have seen where we cleared it off, because normally you use a tractor. But this was uh, a little bit more fun, although a little bit more risky. But I have a conundrum for you. What happens when you have multiple explosives and one detonator or one uh, source of ignition? Well, deck cord is your solution. So deck cord being con consisting of PETN is an outstanding detonator as well. Actually, some blasting caps, depending on the manufacturer, use PETN as the base explosive. Others use TNT, others use RDX. It really all depends, but it's an outstanding secondary explosive. So you can use it to uh, transmit explosive or a detonation shockwave across large distances, as long as you let string out the deck cord and detonate other explosives at remote, at a different locations with only one detonator. So for, in this scenario, we're going to do is set three different explosives separated from each other, uh, varying distances. We're not gonna be too exact about it, just enough so that you see that they're clearly not causing a sympathetic detonation from being too close to each other. And they're going to be detonated by deck cord. And we're gonna detonate the deck cord at one spot and it's going to detonate all three. It'll seem simultaneous, but in reality, it's going to detonate at different times because the detonation velocity is so fast, the camera is not gonna pick up each detonation individually when they occur. Uh, you need a pretty fast high-speed camera for that, which we're working on getting on. So we're gonna set the charges up. I'll explain what you, each one is, so you have an idea what's going on. We'll set the cameras up and we'll watch this thing kick off. So the first and largest and most powerful charge of the three is the TNT charge. So these are actually seismic charges that are made to be synced all together, but it's a kilo of TNT. TNT is TNT. If you add something to it, you obviously change the, the explosive and it becomes something else. But for now, it's just straight TNT. And you can see it right there. This is the raw TNT. And it's already pre-wrapped with some deck cord. Sean already did the honors for us. And he did a pretty good job of wrapping it and then tying it off. So tape is not always sufficient because remember, this is not a fuse. It's going to detonate and when it does, it can whip off. 
So it's important to secure it onto the explosive so that you have adequate contact as well as it does not uh, dislodge or get loose or something, or you, and you, get a, uh, you don't get a detonation. Now there's also a cap weld to these. So he feeded, in, he feeded some deck cord in there just to ensure some detonation. Uh, it, it might be overkill, but it doesn't hurt to have too much uh, uh, detonation source versus not enough because then obviously it wouldn't detonate. So we're gonna place this at the furthest corner from our blast site, so it is, uh, cause it is the largest charge. And then we're gonna move to our next charge, which is gonna be down this way with the smallest charge towards us and the two strongest ones furthest away from us. All right, so let's go to the next one. So our second charge is a little over half a kilo of an ammonium nitrate based explosive. It's similar to uh, Monol, but it's a mixture that we make, but it has a slightly higher detonation velocity than Monol. Since it is a canister and it, uh, it's also square, we would still wrap the deck cord around it just like any other explosive in a canister. Uh, it doesn't, this is obviously an improvised canister, not a prefab one. So what we'll do is we'll make say about three wraps of deck cord around this, and that is sufficient to set off this explosive. And it's also important to know how sensitive the explosive is. So say for example, TNT being far less, uh, far more sensitive than C4, you would obviously use far less deck cord for say TNT than say for, T, uh, for C4. For this one, because it's fairly sensitive, we don't need that much explosive. So three wraps of deck cord at most is all that's necessary. We've used this particular explosive mixture before with great success with about that much of a deck cord. So we'll place this one down, set it with deck cord, and then head to the next charge. So the last charge we have here is Ready Prime, which is an emulsion explosive. And this is actually consisting of also ammonium nitrate, but is emulsified along with a fuel source and some other additives to create a paste. And this is commonly used in the blasting in, uh, industry for with like commercial, like mining or whatnot, because it's replaced dynamite because it is a thousand times more stable, way more uh, insensitive, and also very cheap. It's an incredibly cheap explosive. That's why I like using it a lot sometimes just for moving earth around. We're gonna set it here and then we're gonna detonate from one point uh, all the charges and we'll hopefully we can get the camera to cap and, uh, capture it all and then we'll review what it looks like. Here is a quick breakdown of the tandem charges with a drone shot. The first charge to get kicked off, the emulsion charge is here. Right over here is the ammonol charge. And right over here is the TNT charge. The approximate distance between each charge is 3 meters, give or take. Well, I think that worked. The drone shot gives us the best demonstration of deck cord setting off the charges in sequence. The still shot shows the first two charges detonating and the explosive shockwave transmitted via the deck cord. The second still shot shows all three charges detonating. It's hard to see the deck cord of the second segment as the TNT blast overwhelms it, but you can clearly see all three charges detonating in sequential order due to the deck cord. The blast was so powerful that it knocked over our GoPro, so that was a bummer. It would have given a decent slow motion shot. Oh well. That was pretty cool, right? I, I love doing these detonations. And if you do it right, you can set up the sequence so that it fires in a really neat pattern. Of course, you need a slow motion camera to really appreciate that. And we, we're limited by what cameras we have, but you can see from the still frames and the slow motion video that it started here, transmitted the shockwave down the deck cord to the next charge, and then traveled right over here to the last charge, which was the TNT. And it did a good job of clearing out a lot of the brush. It's what we hope for it to do. Now, moving on, it's, uh, deck cord is really, really good at detonating explosions or explosives in, in sequence or in tandem or if you daisy chain them, but it's also good at doing other things. Let's take a look at that. For those of you who are big fans of Hollywood explosions, they always have a ton of fireballs. In reality, explosives don't produce a lot of fireballs. That's an incomplete combustion or just a slow combustion, right? Well, in this case, we have a bunch of propane tanks that we have wired with the deck cord and then a pyrotechnic kicker. So what this is gonna ideally do is it's going to rupture the tanks and disperse them. It's under pressure, so it's gonna disperse anyway, but the deck cord's gonna cut them open, spread the propane. Deck cord will initiate cause a fire, will it ignite combustion? Sure, absolutely. It's not the most efficient means of doing so. So it is a concern. This is why you have to be very careful. And if it doesn't, that's what the pyrotechnic charge is there for, to ensure that the propane, once it reaches the stoichiometric ratio with air, will start to combust. So what we'll do is we'll put a blasting cap on this one, sit, get to a nice safe distance, and see how it works. Time to hold. The 
The slow motion playback shows that most of the propane tanks ruptured and properly dispersed the propane as desired to create a great fireball. Not as big as hoped, but it got the job done. You can see a few got launched and were still burning post-explosion. A solid demonstration that they are tougher than they appear. For our last demonstration, we will attempt to make a bigger fireball with a commercial propane cylinder. We will set this one off with a two-third pound emulsion charge on top of the tank, several meters of deck cord wrapped around the tank to ensure it cracks open, and a pyro charge beneath the tank to ignite the propane. Let's see if this works better than the small propane tanks. Well, that was a bit anticlimactic. You know, even we were expecting some form of fireball and explosion from this, but we just simply got the standard, you know, uh, explosion from the uh, emulsion uh, charge on top and the deck cord. What we were supposed to happen, or we were estimating to happen, was the explosion would have, de or the uh, explosive charge on top would have cracked the, uh, the can open, uh, the deck cord would have helped uh, crush the can open a little bit more, and then the pyro charge underneath would set off the propane. But obviously that didn't happen. And that's just it, is that deck cord isn't this magical, amazing device that can cut through anything. It has its limitations. As you can see here, it did crush this propane can quite a bit, and I gave it several wraps, and yet it's still pretty much intact. The, the main charge is what ruptured this thing open. The pressure did the rest from the propane. Even though propane is a liquid, is uh, when it's under pressure, it's under liquid, and it doesn't wrap, it rapidly expands, absolutely, because it wants to go to a gaseous state, but under pressure, it's a liquid. And when, if you watch in the, in the slow-mo, you can see the, the explosion is, uh, there's a cloud, possibly of the propane. We didn't really smell much of it. It's, um, it, it's they, get, they put a mercaptan, or usually a, some type of sm a smelling agent that makes propane very unique, so you can identify, ah, that's propane. But nothing detected and obviously we didn't have a fireball but it did leave a neat little crater down here and this is uh a, there was a smaller crater before which we used to put the pyro charge in here that was supposed to come up and set off the t uh, the uh, uh propane cloud but as you can see the deck cord is not hollywood magic it can't do everything that it's claimed to be especially uh setting off these propane tanks which shows that you know these things are actually quite safe <laughs> that's actually quite impressive um but it gives you an idea of the limitations and the ideal uses of deck cord i hope be, be sure to like and subscribe youtube i tell you the algorithm sometimes it loves us sometimes it hates us but be sure to like subscribe and hit the notification button and stay tuned for another episode here at ordnance lab thanks for watching if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.